Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. My name is Andrew Conard. I'm the pastor of this community. I'm so glad that you're connected in worship today. Whether you're joining us online or in person, we are here to worship God, to listen for God's word in song, in scripture, and sermon. A little bit later in the service, we're welcoming new members. We'll experience, uh, get to witness a baptism, and we remember that God is here with us in this place and as we gather together. We want to give a special welcome to those who may be connecting for the very first time and invite you to get more connected in the life of the church. One of the best ways to do that is to sign up for our weekly email newsletter. You can go to our website, sign up with your name and email address. We'll send you an update every week with upcoming opportunities to connect with God and others here with Susanna Wesley. We want to make space now for those that are here in the worship center to greet those around you, to in introduce yourself to someone that you may not know or whose name you may have forgotten, which is okay too. You might go up to them, introduce yourself, and say, I'm so glad you're here for worship. And then remain standing for our Susanna Wesley welcome. Will you please stand and welcome your neighbors this morning? Will you please continue to stand for our Susanna Wesley welcome? These words remind us that we gather in the Lord's name. They cast a vision for our future together as a congregation and remind us of the spiritual practices we use to follow Jesus. We desire Susanna Wesley to be a community where all people are welcome. Will you please join me as you find the words on the screen? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. We are Susanna Wesley Methodist Church. We aspire to be a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God and are forced to bring their life to be that in the world beyond. We seek to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. We connect with God and our neighbors through spiritual practices, worship, study, serve, give, and share. All people are welcome with no exceptions. God speaks to us through words and music. I invite you to continue standing and join in singing our opening song. This is the day of new beginnings. Time to remember and move on. Time to believe what love is bringing laying to rest the pain that's gone. For by the life and death of Jesus, God's mighty spirit now as then can make for us a world of a difference as faith and hope are born again. Then let us with the spirit's daring Step from the past and leave behind Our disappointment, guilt and grieving Seeking new paths and sure to find Christ is alive and goes before us To show and share what love can do This is the day of new beginnings our God is making all things new. Will you please be seated? And as you're seated, I invite you to join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? 
O oh God, we come to you as pilgrims on the way to the cross, seeking to learn and follow in the footsteps of Jesus. We acknowledge that the journey is long and that our sins and struggles can weigh heavily on us, but we put our hope and trust in you, for there we find steadfast love and mercy. Despite the weariness and fatigue that can come with the changes and struggles of life, we know that you are the giver of breath and life. You made us in our lifelessness and revive us again, sustaining us as we worship and follow your way. We come to you as we learn to live inside out, putting our trust and faith in you. Amen. Listen to God's word for us from the Old Testament, a reading from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. The Lord's power overcame me, and while I was in the Lord's spirit, he led me out and set me down in the middle of a certain valley. It was full of bones. He led me through them all around, and I saw there was a great many of them on the valley floor, and they were very dry. He asked me, human one, can these bones live again? I said, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the Lord's word. The Lord God proclaimed to these bones, I am about to put breath in you and you will live again. I will put sinews, you place flesh on you and cover you with skin. When I put breath in you and you come to life, you will know that I am the Lord. I prophesied just as I was commanded there was a great noise as I was prophesying, then a great quaking, and the bones came together, bone by bone. When I looked suddenly, there were sinews on them. The flesh appeared, and they were still covered over with skin, but there was still no breath in them. He said to them, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, human one, say to the breath, the Lord God proclaims, come from the four winds breath, breathe into these dead bodies and let them live. I prophesied just as he commanded me. When, he, when the breath entered them, they came to life and stood on their feet, an extraordinarily large company. He said to me, human one, these bones are the entire house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are completely finished. So now prophesy and say to them, the Lord God proclaims, I'm opening our graves, I will rise you up from the graves, my people, and I will bring you to Israel's fertile land. You will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and rise you up from the graves, my people. I will put my breath in you and you will live. I will plant you on your fertile land and you will know that I am the Lord. I've spoken and I will do it. This is what the Lord says. to join now in our responsive reading today from Psalm 130, as you'll find the words on the screen. I cry out to you from the depths, Lord. My Lord, listen to my voice. Let your ears pay close attention to my request for mercy. If you kept track of sins, Lord, my Lord, who would stand a chance? I hope, Lord, my whole, be, my whole hoping and I wait for God's promise. My whole being waits for my Lord. More than the night watch waits for morning. Yes, more than the night watch waits for morning. Israel waits for the Lord because faithful love is with the Lord. Great redemption is with our God. Listen to God's word for us from the New Testament, a reading from Romans 8, verses 6 through 11. The attitude that comes from selfishness leads to death, but the attitude that comes from the Spirit leads to life and peace. So the attitude that comes from selfishness is hostile to God. It doesn't submit to God's law because it can't. People who are self-centered aren't able to please God but you aren't self-centered. Instead, you are in the spirit if in fact God's spirit lives in you. If anyone doesn't have the spirit of Christ, they don't belong to him. If Christ is in you, the spirit is your life because of God's righteousness, but the body is dead because of sin. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your human bodies also through this spirit that lives in you. 
I invite you to stand if you'd like to, and if you're able, to listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ from John chapter 11. Listen for God's word for us. A certain man, Lazarus, was ill. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. This was the Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother, Lazarus, was ill. So the sisters went, sent word to Jesus, saying, Lord, the one whom you love is ill. When he heard this, Jesus said, this illness isn't fatal. It's for the glory of God so that God's son can be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha, her sister, La- her sister and Lazarus. When he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was. After two days, he said to his disciples, let's return to Judea again. The disciples replied, Rabbi, the Jewish opposition wants to stone you, but you want to go back? Jesus answered, aren't there 12 hours in the day? Whoever walks in the day doesn't stumble because they see the light of the world, but whoever walks in the night does stumble because the light isn't in them. He continued, our friend Lazarus is sleeping, but I am going in order to wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he's sleeping, he will get well. They thought Jesus meant that Lazarus was in a deep sleep, but Jesus had spoken about Lazarus' death. Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. For your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there so that you can believe. Let's go to him. Then Thomas, the one called Didymus, said to the other disciples, Let us go too, so that we may die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was a little less than two miles from Jerusalem. Many Jews had come to comfort Martha and Mary after their brother's death. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. While Mary remained in the house, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask God, God will give you. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Martha replied, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She replied, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, God's son, the one who is coming into the world. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. You may be seated. Well, it's a sad day for the Wildcat fans uh, of uh, Kansas State. The last team from Kansas is out of the tournament, and there will be games continuing. But I know for some of you, perhaps, they don't really matter anymore. Now, when a team, when we're cheering for a team, it's something that we can experience on our own. Sometimes it's you and the television and your couch and Sometimes I can get a little bit out of control when I'm cheering. Maybe you can too. I don't know if this is the case, but, but it's also something I'm aware of that, you know, there's other people in other houses that we're all doing this together. And if you have the chance to be together in the st- stadium, in the arena, it's something that you're experiencing as a community. This balance between being individuals and being in the power of community is something that the scriptures speak to, and we'll take a closer look at it today. Today we're concluding our series, Living Inside Out, and we remember that being a follower of Jesus is not just something that we do by ourselves. It is something that we do with other people. It's about making a difference in the world and reflecting on our own interior spiritual life. Jesus teaches us that loving God and loving our neighbors go hand in hand. And so in this series, we've been looking at how do we reflect on our own life and how does that reflection lead us out into concern and service in the world? Two weeks ago, we considered the importance of seeking God's help in difficult times and looked at the parallels between God providing water to the Israelites and Jesus who offers the woman at the well living water and offers us living water as well. The chance to mend our broken lives through the power of the Holy Spirit, bringing hope, forgiveness, and purpose. Last week, we remembered that acknowledging God's presence changes our perspective on the world, leading to a more compassionate view of others, a more contented view of ourselves. It encourages us to live in the presence of God, to see the world through God's eyes, and to try to set aside the judgment that we might too often find on others. This week, we're going to take a closer look at the scripture from the Psalms that we read responsibly a few moments ago and Ezekiel to look at this balance between individuals and community. Now, the truth is we all make mistakes, don't we? Sometimes we can make them, uh, we know this may not be such a wise choice, and other times we say things or do things that oh, we just mess up. And that's exactly what the writer of Psalm 130 was getting at when they asked this in verse 3, if you kept track of sins, Lord, my Lord, who would stand a chance? 
In other words, would anyone have a chance if God kept track of all our mess-ups and judged us based on them? And it's a pretty clear that the answer is no, and that's a little bit intimidating, at least for me. But that's not the end of the story. We certainly know the story continues in the life of Jesus, and the psalmist here as well recognizes this in the very next verse, verse 4. But forgiveness is with you. That's why you are honored. There's that means that there's hope and a reason to be, uh, find hope in our lives because we can be forgiven for our mistakes. If the Lord kept track of all of them and counted them against us, we would not stand a chance. But God forgives us our sins when we recognize we've messed up, that forgiveness is offered to each one of us. So we could focus on that instead. Embracing the forgiveness and keeping our eyes open for it, just like those who watch for danger or enemies coming their way, as the psalmist continues. The best part is that this forgiveness is not just an individual thing. It's not just for one person, but for everyone. It's for all of our friends and all of our neighbors, even those, perhaps especially those, who we might disagree with or who we might even call our enemies. And the psalmist wants us to know that this gift of grace is open to each person. And I wonder, how do you feel about the idea that forgiveness is available for everyone? While the psalmist cries out for forgiveness and finds it available for everyone, Ezekiel's vision is all about the community. Sometimes we forget that this passage from Ezekiel is about a community when we read it. It could be because the prophet is talking about his own experience. Here's Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. The Lord's power overcame me, and while I was in the Lord's spirit, he led me out and set me down in the middle of a certain valley. It was full of bones. Do you see all the first person in that verse? No wonder we think that it is only about one person. But it's not all about one person. The passage ends with a vast crowd, doesn't it? But still we think it's a bunch of separate people, perhaps, and not a community. I invite you to consider today that perhaps this passage is about building each other up and getting the support that we need to face whatever challenges it is that we're facing. It's about how God can bring us back to life even when we feel completely drained. God can give us a fresh start no matter how hard we struggle. I've heard and maybe you've heard and I've certainly given many sermons about this idea from this scripture over time. But you know what? That's not all bad. It's true that each person needs a little pick-me-up sometimes. For sure, a little encouragement can really help us when we're feeling down. There's definitely a message in this story for every one of us. And I understand that people sometimes just need a break. We're feeling, we might feel dry or exhausted at break sometimes, and this is a good thing to care for ourselves. But if we only consider individuals, it limits the depth of this passage. You see, Ezekiel hears the explanation of these bones. Human one, these bones are the entire house of Israel. The entire house of Israel. This means everyone, not just a few people, not just individuals. So when God asks Ezekiel, can these bones live again? God isn't talking about individuals. It's not about whether you or I can live again. Even though individuals matter, God is perhaps really talking to Ezekiel about the whole group, like a big family, the whole gathering. Nowadays, we might think about it as the body of Christ or the church, or for those of us here at Susanna Wesley, this congregation, this community of people. Now, we know that we're living in a time of day when things seem to change very fast, And one significant change that you may have noticed is that churches aren't important as they used to be. It seems like the church in some settings might be fading away or at least changing a lot. So here we are in a world that's different than where some of us may have grown up. But it's not because we've messed up or we've lost something. What if we're in this situation right where we are today because it's where God wants us to be? Maybe a new paradise. Now that's maybe kind of crazy, isn't it? It might seem weird to call a place where there's so much struggle and disagreement, where we look at our world around us and see there are challenges that are very real. But get this, when the Bible says that God put Ezekiel in a valley full of bones, it's the very same word that's used when God places people in the Garden of Eden in Genesis. God places us. God placed them. God placed Ezekiel in this place. So maybe... Maybe this is where God wants us to be, in a place where things aren't always easy, 
where we need to work hard, where we need to have faith, when we need to trust God's guidance and vision and direction. So here we are at Susanna Wesley, <coughs> considering what our future holds, gathering this afternoon for our Susanna Wesley Advance. And some of you that are connected here or joining us online have been connected at Susanna Wesley for just a few short months, others for several years, some of you for several decades. Imagine that someone asks about this community, about this congregation. Can these old bones come back to life? For some, you might reflect on that question and say, I don't know that there's much hope to that. For others, you may look at that answer and say, there are all kinds of possibilities and I am enlivened and envisioned by what I've been experiencing here. Maybe for some of you, you wish you could go back to how things used to be. Maybe if we did more advertising or opened our doors wider, we could return to the good old days or even though they have already slipped away. But I want to be real. Can these bones live? No, they can't by themselves. They are old and dead. But Ezekiel knew better than to say that out loud. Even though he felt it deep inside, he didn't want to say, no, God, these are clearly bones. There is no way that they are going to live again. Instead, He responded to God, God, you know. Ezekiel trusted in God's presence and vision, relied not on his own understanding, but trusted that God would find a way. And God said, no, they can't live all by themselves. But if you bring them together, Ezekiel, if you talk to them, if you gather them, if you preach to them and prophesy to them, they can live. If the power of the Holy Spirit flows in them and breathes new life into them, they can live. And that is exactly what he did. Ezekiel doesn't do it on his own. It's through the power of God at work in the Holy Spirit. And that's the very same thing for us today. Not one of us can find life on our own, but when we speak to one another, when we encourage God to be at work in the lives of those that surround us, then we do have a chance to live. God can bring new life to each one of us and to all of us all together. And then eventually when they all came together, it was an extraordinarily large company that was gathered there in the valley. The good news is that God's power can bring things back to life. The same power that Ezekiel witnessed in the valley is what flowed through Jesus into Lazarus. And the best part is that we have access to that power too. So be ready to take action, to speak up, to be together in a community, to speak life into the lives of others and allow others to speak life into you. Because as God works in and through us, we can be enlivened to be a part of God's kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. Together, we can live inside out and be a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. Will you pray with me? God, we confess that we can't do all of these things on our own, and we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you would lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us to go, that we might might trust you with our heart and soul and mind and strength, and we ask all these things and trust them in your holy name. Amen. Again, the hymn today just seems really appropriate. Breathe on me, breath of God. Let's stand up and sing together. You may be seated. 
And friends, now it's time to welcome new members to Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. So I'd like to invite them forward and line up here in the front. And as they're making their way forward, I want to remind you that becoming a member of Susanna Wesley means that you want to be a part of a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God and are a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. When someone becomes a member, they're committing to using these five spiritual practices we discuss every week to become more like Jesus. And today, we've got some folks here who want to become members, Tyler and Tabitha, Zachary and Sophia, and John Paul Johnson. So friends, I ask you these questions on behalf of the whole church. Do you reject the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and truly and earnestly repent of your sins? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the Old and New Testaments? I do. And according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? And as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? I will. And finally, as members of Susanna Wesley, will you faithfully participate in the ministries of the church and engage in the spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share? I will. All right, friends. I invite you forward. Zachary and Sophia have the chance to be baptized today. And so I'm going to ask you, we'll have you stand over here. I switch sides. Have you all stand over here. And what we've got here is some water. Some of this water has come from the Jordan River. And just where Jesus was baptized, some of that very same water will be baptized for you today. So Tabitha and Tyler, I ask you, will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church so that by, by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Now, friends, these children will look to you for care and teaching and example on the journey of growing as a disciple of Jesus Christ. So as Christ's body, the church, do you reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, please say we do. do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these children and these family now before you in your care and surround them with a community of love and forgiveness? If you will, please say we will. I invite you to join with me in prayer over this gift of water. O God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away sin, claim these children as your own, and give new life. We pray that by dying and being raised with Christ, they will be part of your work in the world, your dream for all creation, and share in Christ's final victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, it's time for your baptism. Who's first? What name is given this child? Sophia Ewing. Sophia Ewing, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is cold. <laughs> Sophia, I anoint you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and pray that God's Holy Spirit will fill you this day, that you might grow up to be a great person, following after God in all your days. Amen. What name is given this child? Zachary Ewing. Zachary Ewing. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Zachary, I anoint you with this oil in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and pray that God's Holy Spirit will fill you this day, that you might grow, grow to be a great person of God, that you might follow God all of your days. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we'll make your way back down here. And friends, I have a few more questions for you. Brothers and sisters, if you want to take a moment to turn around and face the congregation for just a moment, brothers and sisters, I commend to your love and care these persons who we this day receive in this congregation's membership. Do all you can to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And you'll find the words, the response here on the screen. I think just the next slide. There it is. Oh God. 
we rejoice in your love at work in these baptisms. We thank God for all God has already given you. All right, let's try again. Why don't I look what's on the screen? I'll do the same thing, shall we? Oh God, we rejoice in your love at work in these baptisms. We thank God for all God has already given you and welcome you in Christian love. We reaffirm our desire to be a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God and are a force for good in Topeka and the world beyond. We promise to participate in the church's life and connect with God and our neighbors through spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. Thank you for the gift of new life in Christ and the lives of these children. We pray that you bless them and their families so they may grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace, who has give, called us to eternal life in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Friends, as you have welcomed these new members formally, I invite you to do them informally with a round of applause as they head back to their seats. Attention to the other upcoming events in the life of the church. If you're interested in becoming a new member, we've got another new member Sunday coming up in a couple, uh, a couple of months, and you can sign up there at our website. We also have coming up this afternoon our Susanna Wesley in advance. This is a chance for all of our committees, our governments, teams, and committees um, to uh, lead and do our work together. So it's from 3.30 to 5.30. Um, this afternoon, we invite you, if you're part of one of those teams, we'll invite you to be here. And even if you're just interested in how things are going and where we're headed in the life of the church, we invite you to come to that as well. Tomorrow is the Topeka Jump Rally. This is um, an event that's happening at Countryside United Methodist Church. Um, this is a chance for us to gather together and to, uh, to prepare for the Nehemiah Action, which is coming up later in the spring. Um, Seven o'clock at Countryside United Methodist Church, we are joining with churches from across our community to work for justice. And then this uh, next Friday is our uh, final game night and potluck dinner, our final Friday uh, gathering. If you want to bring a dish, a game to play, a, a food to share with one another, uh, we'll gather here at the church at 6 o'clock, 6 to 7.30. We'll have the chance to share a meal together, build community, and have the chance to maybe meet someone new. We invite you to these as a way to connect in community here at Susanna Wesley. We also invite you every week to use these spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. And today I invite you uh, to remember about the invitation to study, that growing together in knowledge and the understanding of God and Scripture. You can study on your own by reading five verses of Scripture a day, and you can study with other people in a community at least once a year. We have uh, uh, short-term studies. We're making preparations for new Bible studies here this fall. We invite you to consider growing in your faith with others here at Susanna Wesley. We come now to our time of prayer in the service, and during this time, there will be a variety of ways that we invite you to pray. We'll begin with a few moments of silence, and you're welcome to pray um, during that time. Offer your own prayers to God and listen for the way that God might be speaking to you. And perhaps you'd like to pray with your eyes open, and if you'd want to, there will be names on the screen here in just a few moments of individuals and families that we're keeping in our prayers for a variety of reasons. You're welcome to pray with your eyes closed, of course, as well. And there's also here at the front candles. If you want to move at any time during this time of prayer to light a candle as a symbol of your prayers, perhaps as a reminder to be the light of Christ, you're welcome to do that, to light a candle here at the front as well. However you choose to connect with God in prayer, we invite you to remember that God is right here with us as close as the air that we breathe. So I invite you to join with me as we go to God together. Will you pray with me?
O God, we ask, can these dry bones live? Can those who are hungry and thirsty and tired find nourishment and rest? Can those who are suffering and in trouble find comfort and hope? We know that in you and in your presence, these things are possible. We acknowledge the divisions in our families and our communities and the struggles for life amidst war and violence. We pray for wisdom and guidance as we seek to work towards peace and unity. We remember our responsibility to care for each other, to steward the earth which you have entrusted to us, and we ask for your guidance as we strive to be responsible stewards of our lives and all that surrounds us. We know, O oh God, that through your grace and love, these dry bones can live. You breathe the breath of life into us, giving us new life and the ability to share that new life with our community. We give you thanks and praise, God, for gathering us, for your spirit which brings us life, for your son Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and always. And we offer all of this to you in your holy name. Amen. As we've taken a moment to check in with God in prayer, I invite you to take a moment to check in. Let us know that you're here for worship. If you're here in person or joining us online, you can use the Church Center app to check in. If you haven't downloaded the app yet, you can use the form at our website. Or if you're here in person, take one of those yellow Connect cards from the pew in front of you, fill it out, drop it off in the acrylic box on the, int on the welcome table on your way out today. We also invite you to consider giving to support God's work through our church. Every dollar you give goes to support our mission and our vision to be a part of God's work in the world. You can give by texting any dollar amount to 84321. You can set up a one-time or recurring gift there in the Church Center app. And if you want to use the offering envelope in the pew in front of you, you can do that too. Fill it out, place your offering in the basket on the welcome table on your way out here today. As you're taking a moment to do those things, I invite you to draw your attention to the music of our bells again today.
I invite you now to join in the prayer of thanksgiving and the Lord's Prayer. Almighty and restoring God, we have been living through some difficult days as churches and individuals, and we feel like those dry bones in the valley. Please help us to hear the words of hope the prophet shares, which call us back to life and service. In Christ's holy name, we pray all this and the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you're able for our closing song today, Lord of the Dance. Go now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.